Computer vision is a field with enormous potential and it can and will unlock many scenarios for new apps and solutions. I'm Lawrence Moroni from the TensorFlow team at Google, and today I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about it from a mobile developer's perspective. And you'll see some of the APIs and technologies that we've built to make creating apps that use computer vision easy. So you want to build an app that can recognize what your phone sees. And most phones are equipped with a camera, and it would be really nice to be able to use that for more than just taking pictures. Computer vision, by definition, is a computer being able to parse the pixels of an image and interpret the contents from them. So when you take a picture of a bizarre curved fruit, then the computer should be able to tell you that it's a banana. Just kidding. But you do have a great scenario. You think there's potential for an app that could be used by millions of people, and nobody has built one of them yet. And that app is, well, you're not telling. It's such a great money-making opportunity that the last thing you would want to do is give a presentation at a developer conference telling people how to build it. The lawyers would be very unhappy, and they'd probably look at you a little bit like this. So let's not tell the actual scenario, but instead we'll demonstrate how it might work using something generic and not at risk of leaking any important secrets. Like flowers. Yes, I know it's not that interesting to build a flower detector. And you've probably seen lots of apps that can tell you the difference between a daisy and a rose. But let's think about it in terms of how you can build an app that meets your scenario. And starting with complex images like flowers is actually a really interesting way to go. Because there are very sophisticated differences between images like these. And the lawyers are OK with that. So you're good to continue. And of course, your next question would be, well, how do you get started? Well, you're an expert in your field, and you wonder if you can use that expertise and lots of pictures and maybe some other data that you have about your field to be able to build an app. But like all developers, you probably don't want to start completely from zero. Maybe there's existing work that you can use as a starting point, and if for nothing else, just to prove to yourself that this is possible. Well, the answer to this begins with TensorFlow Hub. And this is a repository of models, but much more than just a big folder that's filled with them. The models can come with attached metadata that will allow you to explore how they work. There's code samples about how to use them, and there's a whole lot more. Oh, and you don't need to install anything. It's just a website. So you can just browse there and start playing. And after poking around inside Hub for a bit, I found this model. And it's one that's designed to recognize birds. OK, I know birds aren't flowers, but it's a similar scenario. You take a photo of something strange and colorful, and the computer will tell me what it is. OK, that's quite nice. And the Hub page for this model has a place where you can actually upload your own picture so you don't just take Google's word for it. And that does really help, too. So for example, if I take a picture of my little buddy Charlie here and upload it to TensorFlow Hub, let's see what will happen. It gives me back a list of results for what it thinks it sees. They're ordered by likelihood, so I do see a list of potential matches. And the top one is a Halialitis Luco, a what now? Uh, I thought they told me I wasn't publicly allowed to build an alien detector. But this sure sounds like one, and that's one of those weird creatures from beyond the neutral zone. Good thing there's a website where there's a little box where you can type anything in, and it searches the internet for that thing. It's called Google. You should try it. Anyway, I typed Halialitis Leukocephalus whatever into it, and it told me it's a bald eagle. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried I had an alien invader in my backyard. OK, so that's all very nice. You can try the whole bird thing in the browser with TensorFlow Hub, and it will give you some confidence that you might be able to do something with that technology. But then you'd probably ask, well, does it work in the platform that I care about? Can we get it to work on a mobile device like Android using Kotlin? Or does it just work on whatever cloud and data science environment that the folks at Google built TensorFlow Hub with? Well, the answer here is yes, too. From Hub, I was able to download a TensorFlow Lite or TF Lite model. And Android Studio uses the Gradle build system that makes it really easy to add any dependencies that I need. And the nice folks on the TensorFlow Lite team have created libraries to make implementing image recognition easy through something called the TensorFlow Lite Task Library. It supports a whole bunch of scenarios like image, text, object detection, audio, and a whole lot more coming online all the time. 
You can learn more about the TensorFlow Lite task libraries on tensorflow.org. I'm not going to read out the entire URL, so you can just use this handy dandy QR code to go take a look at the details. Now, I've mentioned the name TensorFlow a few times, and TensorFlow is an ecosystem of tools from Google for AI and machine learning developers. But you probably are a bit confused about how a Python environment works for you as a mobile developer. And if you read about TensorFlow, the clue is really in the name. It's all about dealing with tensors. But you don't deal with tensors, whatever they are, as an Android developer. So let's take a look at that. In summary, a model is generally a neural network. And you feed data into a neural network by turning your data into tensors, and the neural network will give you back its reply as, you guessed it, still tensors. But wait, you might say, I'm a mobile developer and I don't do Python or math or tensors or anything like that. Well, that's the point of the task library that you just added in your build.gradle. This lets you code at a high level with the type of APIs that you're familiar with. There's no tensors in, just images. No tensors out, just lists of objects. So let's take a look at how the code that you would write would then be structured. Before you instantiate a model, you'll configure the options that you need to use, things like the maximum number of results that you're interested in getting back. And as you learn more about neural networks, you'll understand that they don't judge what they see, but they're trained to recognize a lot of different things. So for example, remember that birds model? Well, that can recognize 964 types of bird. So if you send it an image of a bird, it will actually give you back 964 answers, each with a probability that it's a particular bird. So if you send it a picture of an ostrich, for example, it might get very high probability for an ostrich or an emu, but very low probability for a parrot or a sparrow. And instead of fishing through all of the results for the best ones, you can just set an option like this, and the task libraries will do all the heavy lifting for you. We got a model from TensorFlow Hub, so we just now instantiate an image classifier using it and the options that we created on that previous line. And all we have to do is pass the classifier our image, and we will get back a list of generic classifications that we can parse through to get insight on the image that we want to classify. And it just works. I'll do a classification of Charlie here, and I see that she's a Halielitis ludiocephalus. Cool. Now that I've seen that I can create an app that uses tensors and all that stuff without explicitly coding them, I can just use the task libraries to manage pictures, and now I'm much more confident that I can extend this to my own scenario. You remember the one that I'm going to emulate by training a model to recognize flowers. Well, the first thing you'll need to do is get your pictures of all your data items organized into folders. You've probably done that already. But when the data science folks tell you that you'll need labeled samples, that's really what they mean. Your roses are a bunch of pictures in a folder called roses. And when you hear them talk about labels, they just mean the names of the folders. And it's the same for all of the others, the daisies, the dandelions, and so on. TensorFlow Hub gave you a bird model detector. But you might want to build a model detector to something else. And here's where you would need to roll up your sleeves to do that type of data science work, installing a Python development environment, getting it to work with an accelerator, installing all the various AI frameworks, and no, no, you don't need to. Google Colab works in your browser and gives you a cloud-based backend with everything you need, including GPUs for acceleration, for free. So before you invest in all of that stuff, you could actually start building your models using Colab. And who knows, you might just use it all the time. I think I do. OK, you will still have to code in Python. If you haven't used it before, it might make you a little worried. But don't be. With extensions to Python, like the TensorFlow Lite Model Maker, you can actually build something like your flower or whatever detector with very little code and importantly, without needing to learn the ins and outs of neural networks, loss functions, optimizers, and that beloved college-level calculus. So here's an example. You can create an image classifier by initializing it from a folder, like the one with the subfolders of all your flower images. Cool. And when the AI specialists are telling you that for integrity of your model, you need to split your data into testing and training sets to avoid overfitting, well, you can just simply call a method called split. And then you can make a model by calling create on the image classifier. Now, that doesn't look too hard. And then once you have the model, you want to export it from Python land into a similar thing to the one that you downloaded from TensorFlow Hub. Remember, we call that a TensorFlow Lite or TF Lite model. 
Now you can replace the birds one with the flowers or whatever one that you've just created with just a few code changes. And it now recognizes a daisy. Beautiful. So if you're building a detector based on your top secret data that the lawyers won't let you talk about in public, you can now be confident that the same code will work. But wait, there's one more thing. You might have a cool Android phone that you're building this on, but lots of folks have that other phone. You know, the one that your grandma uses because the nice people in the shiny store in the mall convinced her to buy it. Well, you might want to bill for those too. And yes, you can tailor your apps with Swift too, so that you can support iDevices. Now, it's not quite as easy as with Android because you don't have the same task library that we were talking about earlier on. You've got to get a little bit more low level and deal with the data type so that you can pass data in and out of the model. Um, but what we've done is we've open sourced a whole bunch of samples for that to make your life a little bit easier. And to that end, we've launched this site on developers.google.com to help you through getting machine learning and AI scenarios working for a variety of platforms. Check it out for some code samples, tutorials, guides, and a whole lot more. And one thing that's super important to remember is that all of this works within your existing workflow. So if you want to, for example, use things like analytics within your app, then the same code that you use for any other app will work in this app, even though we're using machine learning. You're not changing your app development workflow. For questions and support in building apps like this, we've also launched the new TensorFlow Forum. And it's a place for developers, contributors, and others to engage with each other and with the TensorFlow team. I love to hang out there from time to time myself. We invite you to continue the conversation in the forum. So head over to discuss.tensorflow.org so you can create your account today. Now, this has been a whirlwind tour for how you can get from zero to a functioning app that uses machine learning to give you a computer vision scenario. I hope it was useful to you to see how the Google developer ecosystem works to make it easier for you to succeed. I'm Lawrence Moroni, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on Twitter. Thank you so much.